were thinking about blinking in and ulting. He does his ult at a perfect time. We're gonna use our two to avoid the Poseidon ultimate. We use our three one to get the Poseidon pretty weak. Mercury's able to clean him up. We're gonna use our one, get some damage off. Throw the shield onto our teammates. So right here is an excellent time of when that shield is super useful. We're gonna use our one, we're gonna use our three. We're able to get the pick onto the Medusa. We're just gonna keep throwing these shields onto our teammates, healing them up, dealing some damage to enemies. What a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we have a viewer request to play Changa mid. If you are new to the channel, I upload six to seven times a week. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right and what went wrong. And hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If you are a returning viewer, I don't think my matchup in mid had ever played against the Chonga before because he just let me do dirty things to him. So we're going to go ahead and go meet up with our jungler at speed and let's go ahead and review Chonga's abilities. Chonga's one is going to be a cone attack where she fires a crescent moon in an arc dealing damage to all enemies. This ability is going to be the ability you want to level up first, and it also has a super low cooldown. I believe it is 6 seconds at level 1 with no cooldown built in. Then Chonga's 2, she's going to become CC and damage immune. She's going to be able to travel a little bit, meaning she can't be stopped in her movement or direction. And every tick of damage from an ability or basic attack that she avoids in her 2 is going to restore her mana. At level 1 it's going to be 20 mana per tick, at level 5 it's going to be 60 mana per tick. Not the most important mechanic, you really just need to know that this ability is going to allow you to immune some damage or a CC effect. We will get into Changa's 3 in just a second, but we are about to do some bopping. So we're going to approach lane and we're going to angle ourselves to where we can tag the entire wave with our one. And Poseidon just happens to stand in that distance. So we're going to basic some minions, wait for our one to come back. Tag the wave and the minions, we get our two. We're going to tag Poseidon with the two. Our one is almost off cooldown and the minions are able to finish him. So now we are waiting for our jungler. If our jungler comes early, we're going to try to invade their red. If he's a little late, we're just going to go for our red. Just cleaning up wave, we're going to position ourselves to hit the whole wave with the 1 and the 2. Mercury has to deal with the minions, so he's not really going to push me right now. Still waiting on my Mercury to show up. Looks like we're just going to go for our red. Their Mercury showed up to lane before our Mercury, and I thought that Poseidon might be back up. We are going to get the red buff. I think we have enough time to discuss Chonga's 3. Chonga's 3 is going to be a circle attack around her. It's going to heal at level 1. It's going to be 50% up. Mercury gets a dash. I get a 1 and a 2 off. I get another 1 off. And I'm able to pick the Poseidon again. Pretty good setup from the Mercury right there. So Chonga's 3 is going to be a heal. And it's also going to have healing reduction and deal some damage. So at level 1, the heal is going to be for 50 at level 5, the heal is going to be for 130. We got that Mercury pretty weak. So the healing reduction on the 3 is 50%, meaning if you hit an enemy with a 3, their healing is going to be reduced for 50% for 4 seconds. And this ability also does some damage, but you want to max out your 1 first, because your 1 has a much shorter cooldown. Chang'e's ultimate. Chang'e is going to shoot a line attack forward that's going to stun all enemies. Enemies that are stunned after an enemy are going to be stunned for a second longer. So if you stun three people, the first person is going to be stunned for one second, the second person is going to be stunned for two seconds, and the third person is going to be stunned for three seconds. Pretty good ultimate. You want to use it and then just get your one and three off. Chonga's passive is her rabbit. She can purchase or sell anything anywhere on the map because of her rabbit. The rabbit is going to run to this. We're able to get the pick. He just hung out a little bit too long right there. So with the rabbit, we can open the menu shop and send the rabbit to pick up one object. The rabbit is then going to leave wherever we are, run to the fountain, 
pick up the object, and return to us. So we are going to back occasionally so that way we can leave with the full health and mana. Also in Chaga's passive, she's going to gain 25% movement speed with no backpedal penalty whenever she's using her 1, 2, or 3. So now that we're a little bit more familiar with Chaga's abilities, let's go ahead and review where we are at in the build. So far we have Mage's Blessing, we got Mage's Blessing for the MP5, a little bit of early game power, and it's also going to evolve giving us 10% cooldown. Then we are going to be going into the Spear of Desolation, but we're only going to get the tier 1 version, and then we're going to go into the Shoes of Focus, so that way we can get some cooldown from our boots. Changa has a heal, so I do not feel it's as necessary to get lifesteal on with her. If you can just space yourself appropriately, you should be able to stay pretty safe and not necessarily need the lifesteal boots in order to stay in lane. We're going to go ahead and rotate left to see if there's anything that we can clean up. We're going to go ahead and just ult the Medusa, clean that up. Probably didn't need to ult right there, but just wanted to confirm it really quick. I'd rather use my ultimate than look silly and let that Medusa get away. We did miss a wave in mid from that rotation, so it looks like we missed two melee minions, but we made it back for one melee minion and three archers. We sent our rabbit bat to go get the tier 2 version of Spear of Desolation. And the reason we are going Spear of the Desolation as our starting item is it's going to give us 110 magical power, a 10% cooldown reduction, and 10 flat 10. The passive on this item is if you get a kill or assist, you're going to knock 2 seconds off of all of your abilities. That is pretty good with Chonga. We want to be able to use our abilities quite often. Spear of the Desolation is going to make it to where if we get a kill or assist, we're going to be able to get more abilities off. That playstyle just kind of works with Changa. All right, calm down already. Spear of the Magus may allow me to do more damage, however, I think that the Spear of Desolation is kind of a better buy on Changa. We do have our ultimate, we're trying to be very careful on who we engage right here. We throw our ult, we get some damage off, it's not enough to kill the Poseidon. We're going to use our Aegis on the Poseidon ult. We're going to wiggle away from this Chalk. We take a little bit of damage, we're going to throw our 1 off, we're going to throw our 3 off, and it looks like we are out. So we are going to go ahead and back, because we don't have a whole lot of health and mana, and then we're going to try to make our way back mid. We rotated right, but we didn't really get anything for it. We may have relieved some pressure, but that's about it. We're going to make our way mid, damage is up, so is our left harpy. Sylvanas planted me a plant, which if I stand in is going to give me some MP5. Very helpful, I'm super glad that Sylvanas did that. I did not really optimize it, I did not really stand in it, and I kind of forgot about it. But that is something that could have helped me with my MP5 and my mana management. We're going to pick up the red buff, which is going to allow us to do some more damage. We're going to go straight for the Poseidon. We get him with the 1, get him with the 3. He's half health. We do have our ultimate and our 1. It looks like we're not going to be that aggressive. We're going to go check their red buff. It's not there. And Poseidon has left his tower. Oh, thank you, Fenrir. We would have missed our ult right there. Or Fafnir, not Fenrir. We're going to use our 1 on him, get some damage. Mercury is able to pull him. We're going to chase just a little bit. We throw our 1, we throw our 2, or a 3, and we're able to get the pick. We are in a bad position, but it looks like we're going to be able to get away with it because nobody's rotating on us. And we also have enough money for our Spear of Desolation. So probably after this wave, we're going to go ahead and back. Right. 
So as soon as we have the Spear of Desolation online, we're going to have a pretty large power spike. So right here, looks like I'm debating. I think Spear of the Desolation is the better choice. Just in the sense that it's going to allow you to get your abilities off a little bit more. Spear of the Magus might be picked up later on in the build, possibly. But I think as a item to complement your starter item and your boots, Spear of the Desolation is an excellent item on Chaga. Right now we have 30% cooldown. And it looks like our one has a four second cooldown. So we're going to use our one as often as possible. It's really hard whenever some of the mages have such low cooldowns. The classic one that comes to example is Hevo and his one. It's really hard to be able to pressure an enemy who can get off two abilities by the time you get one off just because they have a super low cooldown. Changa is one of those characters. Her one, super low cooldown, pretty nasty ability. We're gonna focus on this Medusa. Mercury is able to get the pick. We're gonna start falling back. We probably didn't need to fall back that much. Mercury is sticking onto the Fenrir. Fafnir, sorry. I was playing Fenrir the other day. So we did not get a lot from the left rotation. We're going to make our way back to mid. Looks like we lost some melee minions from that rotation, but that should be alright. Fire Giant just spawned. That was that meteor in the sky. We're going to make our way to our red buff. Mercury is dancing with the enemy Mercury in the right jungle. We're going to secure our red. Poseidon is nearby. We have that ward for some vision. We're going to go ahead and rotate right. Looks like this Mercury needs a little bit of help. I don't know if we're going to be able to get a pick on either of these people. Mercury goes down. This might not be the best rotation anymore. Chalk is a tanky man. It's going to take quite a few abilities to get him to a pickable point. We're going to go ahead and ult. We may have ulted a little bit too early right there. We lost our mid tower for our rotation. Three, three. We're able to get the pick onto the chalk, but now we don't have any mana, so we're going to start falling back. So after going into the Sphere of Desolation, I would say Shield of Regarth is an option. And I would also say that the... Where is it? Lotus Crown is an option. In most situations, I would recommend going Lotus Crown. It's going to give you some physical protections, and it's also going to make it to where when you use your 3 on yourself or your allies, you're going to give them a shield that has 20 protections. It's also going to give you a little bit of magical power, and it's going to make it to where the jungler, in most situations, because the jungler is usually physical, can't do as much damage to you. Between the power from your starter item, your boots, and the Spear of Desolation, your build can easily allow a flex item in this spot after boots. And what do I mean by flex item? I mean an item that's not purely damage. It could be a hybrid item, it could be a defense item, it could be a movement speed item. This is a good slot, and we already kind of have our damage online and a pretty good lead. However, I think the Lotus Crown was actually a little bit of a miss by this game, only because Sylvanas is on our team, and he also went Lotus Crown. So I think having two Lotus Crowns on the same team isn't a bad thing, but since he already has it, I think we could get something a little bit more spicy, a little bit more fun. We could get something like the Shield of Regrowth that is going to increase our movement speed every time we use our three, since Stronga is a healer, I feel like there's a couple of healing items that you could buy in this slot. Shield of Regrowth, the Lotus Crown, Rod of Escophilies? I know that's not right. Rod of A something. I think any of those items could fit into this slot. I think Shield of Regrowth is probably the most fun, but I think the Lotus Crown is probably the most helpful for your team. 
After buying this item, I realized that Sylvanas is probably building or has bought this item. I don't want to sell it right away. So in this game, in this context, the fact that our team already has one, I would say that buying it was a small mistake. But I'm not going to sell it and try to buy a new item right away. That would cost me a decent amount of gold and it would put me behind where I actually am. So we're going to hold on to the Lotus Crown for a while and we might sell it before we sell our starter item, but we're going to hold on to it for a bit. We're being super aggressive, fighting him into three people. We miss our ultimate. We use our two. Mercury is able to get a pick. We throw our three down. That's going to provide the shield for our allies. <laughs> I tell Medusa to attack and then I body block her in the tower. I thought the Sylvanas was going to stay around. We totally could have pushed that tower if Sylvanas just ate a few shots, like he's doing now. And I accidentally used my Aegis while trying to use VGS. Sylvanas is able to get a pick. We're going to throw a heal and a shield onto him. He's going to throw a heal and a shield onto us. So we are approaching 2000 gold in our pocket should be time to back and buy an item pretty soon. In fact, I could probably send my rabbit back right now to buy a tier two version of an item. With Changa, you definitely want to try to do that. Anytime you can buy an upgrade without fully backing, just go ahead and send your rabbit back. So after going into the Lotus Crown or the Shield of Regrowth, however you choose, I would then go into Soul Reaver. Soul Reaver is just going to make sure that we're doing consistent damage to all of their tanks and pretty much all of the enemies on their team. We are going to be able to remove anywhere from 2 to 5% of the enemy's health from our 1 every 4 seconds. Because our 1 has such a short cooldown. So looking at the map, Pyromancer is up. That is an objective that we could push as a team. The enemy team did get the first Gold Fury. We're going to check their red buff. It is not there. Maybe check their purple buff. I think Medusa would get more XP from hitting the wave that is currently at our tier 1 tower instead of invading the enemy camps. However, she can play however she wants. Sidon's behind us. We miss our 1. We're thinking about ulting him. We probably should have with that Mercury right there. Mercury is the real target. I feel like he is the one that is keeping them alive in these team fights. If we can get an early pick onto this Mercury, I feel like we should be able to clean up the team fight pretty well. Mercury's right here. We're gonna throw our one off. We're thinking about blinking and an ulting. He does his ult at a perfect time. We're gonna use our two to avoid the Poseidon ultimate, we use our 3-1 to get the Poseidon pretty weak. Mercury's able to clean him up. We're going to use our 1, get some damage off. We're going to use our 2, throw the shield onto our teammates. So right here is an excellent time of when that shield is super useful. We're going to use our 1, we're going to use our 3. We're able to get the pick onto the Medusa. We're just going to keep throwing these shields onto our teammates, healing them up, dealing some damage to enemies. We're thinking about chasing all the way. So right here, we are making a very embarrassing mistake. The tier 2 tower is still up, so we can't even tickle the phoenix. We're going to heal up our team, throw a shield onto everyone. So even though two teammates have the lotus crown, it is a good item. It is nice to be able to just throw those on there. We're going to try to burn down this Poseidon. He uses his Aegis. Oh no, I got put in a bad spot. We use our Aegis onto the Cabracanult. We're going to try to wiggle, but Mercury is able to get us. So right there, we just got a little too aggressive. We thought we could solo the Poseidon right after he respawned. And then Mercury just crept up behind us. We did do a good job using our 2 to avoid some damage and using our Aegis to avoid the Poseidon ultimate.
After going into Soul Reaver, we're going to be going into Obsidian Shard. Soul Reaver gives us not as much magical power as it used to because it just recently got nerfed, but it's going to make sure that you're dealing a percentage of the enemy's health every time you damage them with an ability, and it's also going to provide you 10% magical penetration. We are going to be going for Obsidian Shard. Obsidian Shard is going to provide us 20% magical penetration, and the cap for magical penetration is 40 so we will be sitting at 30%, plus Obsidian Shard will occasionally let us do a little bit more because of its passive. Our ultimate is ready, we could probably get a big play. Savannah pulls Medusa out of my damage, but that is okay, we're able to confirm the kill. I said okay, it was more kind of like a ha ha ha, okay. But there's no real VGS command for that. We're gonna use our one. We use our two to avoid the Poseidon Whirlpool. We get our one off again. Mercury's able to clean up the Fenrir. Fafnir. I think I've gotten that wrong every time this game. It is Fafnir. Their red is up. We're going to go ahead and snag that bad boy. Pyromancer is still up. Does not look like our team is that interested in it. There is a bit of a team fight breaking out. We're going to make our way over there, see if there's anything that we can do. Changa, I mean, Chalk is a pretty tanky boy. Mercury is very separated. Medusa chunks. We are going to make it, need to make a mental note of that. We used our two. We get our ultimate off. We know that Mercury is also rotating through this jungle, so we're going to rotate towards right lane. It's a good thing we had those extra protections on that hammer hit. Right here we're going to use our 1, we're going to use our 2, just to get a little bit of separation from the chalk. We're going to heal ourselves a little bit. We are within range of a Pestilence. And Chalk also has a Runic Shield, so Pestilence is going to reduce my healing, and the Runic Shield is going to reduce my power. Good jump by the Fafnir. We're going to use our 1 on the wave. Looks like our team is still chasing this Chalk and Fafnir. They are very tanky. I don't want us to spend too much time trying to chase them down. They're probably just acting as bait for their team to rotate onto us. Our red buff is up, but our team is very pushed on the map. I'm not sure if we're going to be going for the red buff right now. And we're going to go ahead and just back. Just shy of enough money for the Obsidian Shard. Our team is still very pushed up, even though all enemies on the team have spawned. So it's probably going to be a 4v5 over there pretty soon. We're going to make our way to our red buff. Not really interested in the harpies. We're going to get the red and then rotate to the team fight. The team fight that is going pretty poorly. Oh, looks like we're going to clean up left lane. We know there's no point in going into that team fight. Push them back. Damage field. So, we're going to clean up this left lane. Get a fat wave and then a normal wave. That puts us very close to level 20. We're going to go ahead and get rid of this Medusa statue. Clear the wave, and now we're going to make our way mid, checking the purple before we go. Looks like we're not interested in the purple at all. Gold Fury is about to respawn, but our team is still not fully up yet. Right there, we each got one Oracle, so nobody gets the vision. Aside, and we're going to try to poke him down. 
We use our ultimate. Fafnir jumps in. Fafnir uses a horrific emblem, which is going to apply a slow. I use my two to remove the CC effect or the slow from the horrific emblem. Right now, we just need a good team grouping. Good team grouping, a pick or two, and we should be able to just push a lane. We're gonna make our way over to the Gold Fury. Please. On my way. Mercury's dancing with four, five people in mid. And we're still gonna make our way to the Gold Fury. We get our three off onto our teammates, providing the heal and the shield. It looks like they're gonna be able to get the primal, no problem. If we can get the pick onto Mercury, that is huge. That is his beads. We could blink in. We could ult. He blinks right as we blink. We, unfortunately, did not use our 2 or our Aegis right there. We're able to get the pick onto the Fafnir. That's 2 down. That's 3 down. We're going to win right here. Cthulhu ultimate plus Savannah and Chonger heals. Two people can't stop that. You've only just begun, haven't you? We're just gonna tank it, and then we're gonna use our two on that final tower shot. Buy Medusa a little bit more time. So if we did not have any heals, we might need to back right here, but we are five man, we have heals. We're just gonna <laughs> go for the Medusa in spawn. And I think that is going to be it for this game. So if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel. Got plenty of Smite videos up there and subscribe for more content. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.